Hello and welcome back. This week we will be talking about powder bed fusion additive manufacturing. Powder bed fusion includes primarily SLS 3D printing. This information is found in Chapter 5 in your textbook. In this figure, you can see a diagram of how this process works. Rather than having a vat filled with resin, this has a bed full of powder. You can see that a COT laser shoots onto the powder bed. Once the powder is hit with the laser, the parts drop down and it's covered with a new layer of powder. We will go a little further into detail with this later in this lesson. A couple of things to note. Centering is essentially the act of melting materials. When we talk about centering in the machine, that's happening right where the laser is hitting. A centering oven is an oven that gets the final part hot enough to become molten and merge together. Another thing to note is that since we are working with round pieces of material, little grains of sand essentially, you're going to have to, a problem of porosity with this type of additive manufacturing. Having a part full of pores can cause a weak part. You can see an example of the porosity in this photo. You'll notice that we start out with the round balls of the uncentered particle and then as it heats up it kind of connects as the surface tension breaks and it creates this inside pocket that's poor and then as it continues to get you know more and more merged you have a smaller and smaller pore and so porosity can be a real problem with this type of additive manufacturing. SLS technology was developed in Texas at the University of Texas in Austin. It was originally developed to use a point-wise laser scanning technique to make plastic prototypes. We went over point-wise laser scanning last week. From the plastics, SLS has been further developed by industry to print ceramics and also metal. They have even developed layer-wise processes for SLS. Powder bed fusion machines typically use a sealed chamber with an inert gas inside to keep the material from oxidizing. The chambers are also typically heated in order to keep the material just below the melting temperature. When the laser shoots the material, it heats to above the melting tip and fuses. Due to the way it continually stacks powder into the chamber, SLS does not require support structures. However, many metal SLS processes still use supports because they bond to the print bed. There are four main types of powder fusion mechanisms. They are solid state centering, chemically induced centering, LPS and partial melting, and finally, full melting. We're going to go over those four in a little more depth now. The first type we're going to talk about is solid state centering. In this process, you don't quite get the material you're using to a fully liquid state. You get it really close, and then the particles stick together. It's sort of like if you have a bunch of marshmallows in a bowl. They don't really stick if they're dry, but if you put a little bit of water on them and then let them dry, they'll stick together. The inside of the marshmallow never turned to liquid, but enough of the outside did for it to merge. Next is chemically induced centering. This process involves either having a second type of powder mixed in with the first, or a different type of gas in the chamber that works with the powder to create a new chemical compound. LPS and partial melting is the third type. This process is a little bit different. It actually has some subgroups in it as well. In this type of powder bed fusion, part of the powder is melted and the rest stays solid. The melted part acts like a glue to bind the unmelted part. Let's talk about the different types of partial melting. Separate particles. You can see this in figure A. There are clearly two distinct materials in this mixture. One of the materials will melt when exposed to the laser. The other will not. This acts as a glue to hold the unmelted particles together. Composite particles. For this type, you have two materials in every particle on the powder bed. Once again, you heat the material and one material acts like a glue for the other. Coated particles. When the unmelting particles are coated in the binding material uniformly. This is a little bit more of the same, but it has the added bonus of being completely evenly distributed throughout. Indistinct binder. This type is used when there isn't a distinct material binder but it can have a similar effect. For example, we could have a material that melts and hardens really easily, so when the laser hits it, it may melt, but not all the way. Finally, we have full melting. This is typically used in metal centering process. The laser actually heats the material up deeper than the actual layer it's working on. This gives really good layer bonding. In this diagram, you can see the process with an added step. 
So the loose powder is hit with the melting laser. The binding material melts and forms the glue holding together the green part. Then you can center the material, causing the unmelted particles to bond together. Finally, you can impregnate the part with another metal in order to make it stronger and get rid of the porosity. Let's watch a video on some of the pros of SLS. When you need the optimal combination of print speed, material strength, part quality and cost effectiveness, there is no other additive technology today that can match selective laser sintering. Here are seven reasons why you should choose the ProX SLS 6100 from 3D Systems against other technologies such as binder jetting and FDM. Let's go. One, the system features a truly broad range of functional nylon materials, including a cost-effective nylon 12 for replacing general injection molded parts available in white and plus suitable for dyeing in a range of very attractive colors, a glass-filled nylon 12 for enhanced mechanical stability in larger parts, a mineral fiber filled nylon 12 for superior stability in hot environments, a mineral aluminium filled nylon 12 with a very nice aesthetic metal like finish, and a range of nylon 11s for high impact stability and polypropylene like characteristics for snap fits and living hinges. Two, parts printed on the ProX SLS 6100 feature best in class surface quality accuracy and sharpness. As you can see from parts such as this, where you see no unwanted holes, no divots, and no gaps between the different print layers. Three, SLS parts are sintered at really high temperatures, delivering true production grade functionality with nearly double the impact resistance and elongation at break compared to alternative nylon 12 3D printers. Four, SLS delivers the most consistent and repeatable mechanical properties of any technology, particularly when we're talking about the Z height of the parts. That's something where other technologies can be notoriously weak. Five, the ProX SLS 6100 saves you up to 20% on the cost of each part you print. It uses far less consumables and with the world-class 3D Sprint software, taking you seamlessly from file preparation to print, saves you thousands on license fees every single year. Six, SLS is up to seven times faster than other technologies with no time wasted on removing supports. The powder handling is fully automated and the material quality control unit ensures that there's zero worries over powder quality. And seven, the ProX SLS 6100 features a higher packing density and up to 25% larger build volume than alternative similar class systems. All in all, it means that with the ProX SLS 6100, you can now build the industry's strongest, highest quality parts more effectively and more efficiently than ever before. There are some obvious pros to this technology. Let's watch a video on how metal SLS works. Direct metal laser sintering, also known as DMLS, is an additive manufacturing technology that creates metal parts directly from 3D CAD data without the need for tooling. DMLS utilizes a variety of metal and alloy materials such as stainless steel, cobalt chrome, and Inconel to create strong, durable parts and prototypes. DMLS is an excellent choice for functional metal prototypes, high temperature applications, and end-use parts. The DMLS process begins in the same fashion as other layer additive manufacturing technologies. A program takes 3D CAD data and mathematically slices it into 2D cross sections. Each of these sections will act as a blueprint telling the DMLS machine exactly where to center the metal material. The data is then transferred to the DMLS equipment. A recoder assembly pushes powdered metal material from the powder supply to create a uniform layer over the base plate. A laser then draws a 2D cross-section on the surface of the build material, heating and fusing the material. Once a single layer is complete, the base plate is lowered just enough to make room for the next layer. More material is raised from the cartridge and recoated evenly upon the previously sintered layer. 
DMLS machine continues to center layer upon layer, building from the bottom up. As the part is built, support structures are added to give supplemental strength to fine features and overhanging surfaces. The completed part is then removed from the base plate and treated with an age-hardening heat process to further harden the part. Any support structures are also removed at this time. With numerous surface treatment and hand polishing options available through service providers, DMLS parts can be used in highly cosmetic applications. Typical uses for DMLS include tools and manufacturing aids, small integrated structures, dental components, surgical implants, and aerospace parts. This is the end of this week's lesson. Like last week, you will have a discussion, an assignment, and a quiz. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Have a good week.